Hello. Thank you for joining me today on this epic episode of eight awesome German words that I wish we had in English. Cross. Uh, let's go, because I'm excited. The German language is so awesome. Cross. Go check out Wanted Adventure, by the way, for this epic video. I mean, I haven't watched it yet, but I already know it's going to be legendary. Hey, everyone. I'm Donna, and you're watching Wanted Adventure Living Abroad. Okay, so of course there are cool things in every language, but German is the foreign language that I've been learning and speaking for the past six years, and I've noticed some really cool words in German that I'd like to share with you today. I wish, oh, how I wish that we used the literal translation of these nouns in English. That would just be so great. Let's start with one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorites. Yes. So, in German, Bretzel. German, the word for snail is Schnecke. Okay. Schnecke. Okay, fine. Good. Then in English, we have a completely different word for the animal without the shell, which is called Slug. A slug. Snail and slug. Well, in German, they have Schnecke, and for slug, it's nacht Schnecke, which literally means <laughs> naked snail. <laughs> I love it. It's just so amazing. Nacht Schnecke. Nacht Schnecke. Nacht Schnecke. Means naked snail. I love it. Nacht it's just so amazing. Schnecke. Cross. Snail and naked snail. That's perfect. I think I'm just going to start calling slugs naked snails from now on and see if I can get it to catch on. It does make me wonder how naked snails ever became, like how did they survive? If they don't need the shell, then why are there snails? It's just so great. The naked snail is not the only animal with an awesome name in German. No, nope. in English, we have the animal called the skunk, and that name comes from what the Native Americans called it, but the Germans simply tell it like it is. They don't care about hurting that poor little skunk's feelings. <laughs> They're honest and to the point. Stinktier, they <laughs> Stinker! <laughs> Stinktier. I like that. You stinktier. So is that an insult in Germany? You stinktier! Ha! Ah! Uh, but skunk is kind of like, it's become almost a word in English, like, oh, that's, oh, that's some skunky, that's some skunky food you got. Woo, some skunky breath. Woo. Stink dare. Call it, which literally means stink animal. Another <laughs> animal whose name just gets right down to business in German is the sloth. Now, the English word sloth did come from the word slow, so we're also describing the animal's overriding behavior with that name. But the Germans took it one amazing step further, calling them the foul tier. A foul tier. That just sounds like another stinky animal. Foul. Foul. Oh, there's a foul tier. Stinkter. Foul tier. Oh, please. Breath mint, please. Literally lazy animal. What can I say? <laughs> it suits them perfectly. Okay, moving away from animals now. In English, this is a pear. And the Germans call it a beer. No, that's a piece of paper on a popsicle stick. Beernet. Okay, fine. What, a what do they this call This is it? a pear. And the Germans call it a beernet. A beernet. Okay, fine. What about this? Light bulb. In English, a light bulb. And in they do look similar. Upside down pear. Upside down beernet. Is that what they call it? In German, glühbirne. Literally glowing pear. Oh, that's actually cool. I like that. The glowing pear. People in America don't eat pears enough to have thought of that one. <laughs> the glowing pear. Glühbirne. And if you drop cool. your glowing pear on the ground, you have to clean it up with a vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner is actually a pretty descriptive word for- Does anybody else feel weird about vacuum, vacuuming glass? I would use a dustpan. 
of the thing, now that I think about it, it cleans using a vacuum. Thus, vacuum cleaner. But I still think the Germans have us beat because they call it Staubsauger. Staubsauger. <laughs> Staubsauger. Which is literally dust sucker. Dust ah. sucker. I love it. It sounds like a wrestling name or something. Like, now. This is why you guys' words are so long, because you don't ever make up a new word. You just cram them all together. I think there's only like four German words. Yet they're just mixed together, crammed together differently. In this corner, standing at one and a half feet tall with a five foot extendable arm, we have the dust sucker. Watch out. It certainly does suck. These are your hands in both English and German. And this is a shoe. Spelled differently, but said the same in both languages. Uh -oh. But while shoe. in English we have a third totally different word, for this, a glove, in German it is a Handschuh. <laughs> a Handschuh. Handschuh. Oh man, that is cool about German though, because I feel like I just need to learn those four words and I can speak the whole language. Okay, I think it's more like 400, but still. Like hand shoe, if I knew if I knew how to say shoe, which it's just shoe, hand shoe, got it. A hand shoe, hand shoe. Hand shoe. But I kind of think the Germans screwed up here because, I don't know, it really seems more like a hand sock to me. I'm just saying. Ah, uh, yes. And lastly, a two-parter here. In English, this is called an escalator. It came from the word escalade, which means to climb a wall, and followed the pattern of the word elevator. So that's why you have elevator and escalator. But in German, an escalator is called Rolltreppe. Rolltreppe. Which means like rolling stairs. And that's pretty cool and all. But I just love the German word for elevator even more. Aufzug. Aufzug. Literally up train. Oh. Amazing. So Zook is a train? Zook. Auf Zook. So my question for you is, give me some more. What are some more? Up train. More cool words in German or any other language out there in the world. Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks. So, so would you guys even consider those, um, what's it called in America? Uh, when two words are, in English, when two words are together, it's like a what, conjunction? Uh, let me see, let me see. Okay, I think I just remembered. Compound word. Compound word? But you guys have so many compound words that almost every word is a compound word. I'm being a little bit facetious. I mean, not every, but, and not every word is a compound word. I know that. But you guys have a lot. So do you even recognize them as being... Compound words, or do you just say, you know, foot shoe, hand shoe, um, and you don't think anything of it? Like it's, yeah, I don't know. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? No? Okay, sorry. Um, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. I already said that last video, but for those of you who didn't watch it, I hope you had a Merry Christmas. And I hope to see you here again tomorrow. Because tomorrow, I think I'm going to be doing some German TikToks. See what's new this week on the German TikToks. That'll be fun. Uh, I hope to see you there tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Good night and goodbye. Cross!